Dear friends, if this video is helpful to you, remember to click on the like button underneath and subscribe to the channel for future sessions. If you have any question or comment, make sure to leave them below and we will revert back. Planting Systems Layout is done to locate the actual position of trees, roads, water channels and buildings in the orchard. The mistake committed in the initial stage of orchard establishment can cause loss throughout the life of the orchard and it is very difficult or even impossible to correct them later. It is therefore essential that the layout of an orchard should be carefully planned and executed to facilitate proper care to the orchard. A well considered layout plan should be followed for planting an orchard. The plan should provide optimum number of trees per unit area consistent with sufficient space for proper development of each tree and convenience in various orchard operations such as interculturing, spraying and harvesting. Before laying out an orchard, it is advisable for the orchardists to seek the guidance of an expert. Now, these components are very essential before laying out of an orchard. First one is roads and building. The buildings including owner's residence, labor's quarter and sheds should be located fairly close to the public road or in the center of the site or near the water source in the site. The area necessary for construction should be left unplanted even if the construction is delayed. Straight roads of 10 to 12 meters should be constructed at right angle to each other for easy movement of carrying any garden machinery. The roads should be given gentle slopes on either side so as to drain off the excess water. Position of water source. If the source of irrigation is going to be well, it should be dug before planting as the tree require water as soon as they are planted. The bore well should be located as far as possible at the highest point to facilitate easy distribution of water by gravity at least cost. Fencing to prevent destruction of trees from stray cattle and also to protect the orchard from trespassers or thieves, it is necessary to provide some kind of fencing to all sides of the garden and this should be done preferably before planting the orchard. It may be prepared by using thorny bushes but they are not satisfactory since they require frequent repairs and replacement. Barbed wire fencing is very good but its initial cost is rather very high. The best protection can be made by building up a live fence as no investment is needed for these live fences except proper watering and maintenance during summer months. Some of the thorny plants such as Cancer Crandus, Propsis juliflora make a very good life fence. Then wind breaks. The exposure of orchard to wind increases the loss of moisture both by increasing the rate of transpiration as well as surface evaporation. The high winds also cause damage to the fruit plants 
by blowing of branches and fruits the fruit set is also reduced as the wind causes stigmatic secretion to go and this result in the failure of proper fertilization the trees commonly used as wind breaks are eucalyptus cassurina equisetifolia seedling mango trees whereas for fruit crops with low height like banana or papaya wind breaks of sesbenia aegyptica is grown on the southern or western side of the plantation the wind break trees sometimes may compete with orchard trees for soil water and food to prevent this competition a trench may be dug about 0.9 to 1.2 meter deep and about 3 meter away from the row of wind break trees and all their roots in the trench should be cut away shorter fruit trees may be planted in the foreground and taller trees further away such gradation facilitates better watching fruit trees that require irrigation should be planted too close to the source of water while the rain fed ones away from it the fruit that ripen at the same time should be planted in a condition compact block high fertile area of the orchard should be devoted to more paying fruit crops now there are different type of systems of planting the planting of an orchard includes various type of systems which are square system rectangular system hexagonal system triangular system diagonal or quinquennial system and contour system out of all these square system hexagonal system and quinquennial system are most commonly used in jammu province no before going for planting of an orchard how do we calculate number of plants it's very simple you can calculate as your own just take your pencil and pen and note down this formula the area which is going to be planted it should be hectare then we require row to row and plant to plant distance so number of plants is equal to area divided by row to row multiplied by plant to plant distance now in square system the distance from plant to plant and row to row is same the plants are at right angle to each other every unit of four plants forms a square this is the most common system followed for planting of orchards and is easy for layout this facilitates interculture in both the directions after the orchard is planted for actual layout in the field one boundary line is chosen and along with this line a base line is fixed then first line is made at the half of the proposed distance parallel to the base line contradictory to right angle triangle in the ratio of 3 is to 4 is to 5 draws a second line the lines of trees are drawn perpendicular to the base line it is so fixed that lines meeting it are parallel to field now the position of the trees on the base line is marked with pegs from these pegs perpendicular lines should be marked with the help of cross bars the plant position can best be marked on all the four sides and finally the field by running strings length 
and breadthwise and by putting pegs at the cross. No rectangular system. In this system, the distance from plant to plant and row to row is not the same. The trees are planted in straight parallel rows. This is very good system as it is easy to understand layout and allow interculture in two directions. No hexagonal system. In this system, the trees are planted in each corner of equilateral triangle. It is therefore also known as equilateral triangle system. Here, six trees form a hexagon with the seventh tree in the center. It is employed where land is expensive, thus accommodating 15% more plants per unit area than the square system. The trees in this system, however, have a tendency to crowd after a few years. The cultivation can be carried out in all the three directions. The number of plants in this system are 15% more than the square system. Now triangular system. The trees in this system are planted as in the square system except that those in the even numbered rows are midway between instead of opposite to those in the odd rows. In this system, however, every second row will accommodate one plant less than in the square system, though the rows are equidistant. No quinquinous system. It is laid exactly like the square system, except that a fifth temporary tree, also known as filler plant, is planted in the center of every unit of four plants. The filler is uprooted when the permanent plants start bearing. They yield some crop before permanent trees come into bearing. The fillers make cross cultivation difficult. Many times the grower often delays their removal and this adversely affects the performance of the permanent plantation. This system accommodates 10% more plants than the square system. No contour system. It is followed in the hilly areas where the slopes are steep. The trees are planted along a uniform slope and usually at right angle to the slope with the view of reducing the loss of top soil due to soil erosion. Its planting is done as in square system. The markings should be done from lowest level to the top.